Let's look at the kind of questions we are going to tackle today. Hi everyone, welcome to Mathematically Inclined. When I told you these are the kind of questions we are going to tackle, well, I missed out on saying in three seconds. Yes, this is possible, you know, when you are on this channel. How do you think you would find the 10th derivative for the given function? Well, it's really simple. The answer would be... That's it. It is this simple. Well, what about this one? Yes, this is equally simple and the answer would be... That's it. Yes, it is so magical. Want to know the secret? Well, then stay tuned. Also, there would be a bonus sixth question which is so important for competitive exams and one of my favorites. So, let the magic begin. Suppose you are given the function x raised to power n. Then in order to find its specific derivative, you can do it for 1, 2, 3, 4, but it is very difficult when a very higher order derivative is asked in the question. So, here's a little formula. Suppose you have to find the rth derivative for this. The answer is simply npr into x raised to power n minus r. Yes, you can try finding it with any number. This would be the answer. Same way, in case of simple x, you have a linear function where you have the coefficient to be a and another constant to be b. And you have to find the rth derivative for this specific number. Well, not to worry again, it is the same. If this is r, this also would become r. And after that, you would write your n, p, r. And then ax plus b whole raised to power n minus r. Wasn't this so quick and easy? Note it down. So now if I apply these formulae, look at the first one. Since there is a constant attached to this one, so it comes more so in the category of ax raised to power n. So it's simple. Whatever is the constant that is raised to power the exact same power for which the derivative has been asked. Next, it is NPR, where N is this number. So, 17P10 into X raised to power N minus R, which is 7. Minus, now this is quite a common sense. You are looking at the 10th derivative and this is X raised to power 9. You know with every derivative, the power keeps on decreasing. So, by the 10th derivative, there would be nothing left. And that's your answer. In case your options give you an expanded answer, then you know all you need to do is solve for this permutation. Have a look. Same way looking at question 2. So we have, this is x raised to power 100. So it's simply 100 p 20. And then you have x raised to power 100 minus 20. That's 80. Minus if you have to do x raised to power 73 again, 73p20, x raised to power 73 minus 20, that's a 50. And 2 in any derivative would always be a 0. So, that's your answer. And remember question 3. So, in order to find the fourth derivative, first of all, since there is a constant attached with x, so you can simply write it as 2 raised to power 4. Next, it would be 10 P 4 and then you write the entire term as it is. After writing the entire term as it is, 10 minus 4 which is a 6 and bingo. That's your answer. Same way, moving to another question. So, you have to find the 13th derivative of the given function. Not to worry. Since this is 5, it simply becomes 5 raised to power 13. Then you have NPR, so 50 P 13 and next you have 5x minus 7 whole raised to power 50 minus 13 with 37. Wasn't this so interesting and quick? 
You people want to stay more and more mathematically inclined? Then join my Facebook page, follow me on Twitter and also join me on my WhatsApp group Mathematically Inclined Now. All the links you would find in the description box below and also for the WhatsApp group, you can send me a message on this number and you would get the link. Click on that and you get all the latest updates first. And now continue watching. Same way moving to the last one. Now before you do anything, let's bring it to this format. So I can write this as minus 1 into x plus 10 raised to power 11 so that I can conveniently apply the formula and this would give us minus 1 raised to power 7 and next you have 11 p7 and minus x plus 10 raised to power 11 minus 7 that's a 4. Easy and quick. There are few very important things that I wanted to discuss with you people. First of all, I don't only make super shortcuts but also full concept videos. So make sure that you keep requesting for what you want as it helps me to plan my content. Secondly, a lot of you keep commenting, mailing, messaging and asking about putting a video which is already there on my channel. So before you make a request, I would request you people to check out my playlist which are there under the playlist section and also on the home section of my channel. Go through all the playlists and I'm sure you would find a lot of videos you have been asking for. Thirdly, all these tricks that I discuss, it's not necessary that they come directly in any of your papers. But yes, they are definitely very helpful solving tools. Suppose you have a huge question and you solve a couple of lines and then suddenly there is a form which appears for which you know the shortcut. Don't you think that saves you so much time? And now keep watching. Remember I mentioned about a bonus question in the end which is so important. Have a look. If you are given a simple fx is equal to x raised to power n, you have to find the value for f of 1 plus f dash of 1. That means the first derivative, the second, the third, so on and so forth till nth derivative. When x becomes 1, then you have to mark the correct option. Not to worry, we can go ahead with the same formula. So f1 is very simple it is simply your 1 now since you already know the formula for this is whenever you have to find any derivative it is simply npr x raised to power n minus r even though it's very simple to find your first second third derivatives directly still we would like to apply this so if i have f dash of 1 it would be simply my np1 x raised to power, so there is no x, in place of x I have 1, raised to power n minus 1. Now this raised to any power is always 1. So we are left with np1 upon, if I am looking at 1 factorial, it is simply a 1. Moving next, moving to the next one, if I have f double dash 1 upon 2 factorial, now according to the formula this is np2 and 1 raised to power whatever n minus 2 upon 2 factorial. Now if you can recollect what was the formula npr it was basically n factorial upon n minus r whole factorial. Now if I want to divide it with r factorial as well. So if I introduce an r factorial here this gets transformed to so in short if I have this portion it gets transformed to ncr simply. So I'm going to replace this with this entire portion with nc2. That's it. Even your np1 and nc1 are the same. Same way looking at the pattern if you have f triple dash 1 upon 3 factorial as per my formula it would be np3 1 raised to power n minus 3 upon 3 factorial. So it's simply nc3. So going ahead with the trend, you would realize that this becomes 1 plus nc1 plus nc2 plus nc3 so on and so forth. The last one would give you ncn which is technically 1. And if you can recollect the formula for this, it was simply a binomial expansion for this one which is 2 raised to power n. 
so the option is option b trust me explaining the concept takes longer but if you do it on your own it would not take more than 3 to 4 seconds have a look it's time for your diy yes do it yourself question and now it is very simple and sweet If your fx is 3x minus 5 whole raised to power 17, then find the fifth derivative of x. So comment accurate and fast because you know the top three accurate answers always get named in my upcoming videos. I hope you enjoyed this video. Yes, then make sure to give this one a big thumbs up. Share it with all the people around you. Tell me if you want more such videos of finding the nth derivative of more complicated functions. I'll be happy to do that. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel so far, then make sure to hit this icon and the notification bell. I would see you with a new exciting video very very soon. Until then, bye bye.